Hi, I'm Abby Clancy. Oh, I'm Peter Crouch. And we're from the Therapy Crouch. And we need your help. It's the British Podcast Awards coming up. And we would like your help with getting a nomination for the Listener's Choice Award. Because that's the main one. Mm -hmm. That's the only one. That's the only award people want, I think. Yeah. Well, you know, as a uh, British Podcast Award winner, you know, I know how much it would mean to this podcast to get one. Um, because that Peter Crouch podcast has been awarded and I'm sure that this podcast will again get there. But... Yeah, because I've only got one trophy in our house, which is a strictly glitter ball. Yeah, my husband. <laughs> um, and Pete's got hundreds, so I would like another one. To go it's not next a bad to my... one, to be fair. No, to go next to my glitter ball. Mm. And yeah, so we need your help. Yes, yeah, um, so get voted. And what is it? It's the Listener's Choice British Podcast Awards. Get involved. Hello and welcome to the Therapy Crouch with me, Abby Clancy. And me, Peter Crouch. You okay? oh, no. Why not? I'm knackered. Oh yeah, why? It's been busy. Busy. I think we start with every podcast saying that, don't we? <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. We do. But what are you being busy doing? Working. I'm filming this new show mm -hmm. um, for ITV. And it's about going round influential women's houses who have a passion for in for interior design. So I'm absolutely loving it. I've been to some incredible houses, met some incredible people. Uh, really inspiring people, in fact. Mm. Do we have any indication on who you've been, whose house you've been around to or we're going to have to wait? Well, you're supposed to wait, really, I think. Can you give us one exclusive here on the therapy crouch? Well, you've got me fired from my job anyway. So we were playing a game earlier on. Yeah. We had to do this thing for WhatsApp and we had to send each other a text mm -hmm. through our phones. And Pete decided to text my boss that I don't want to do the show anymore. <laughs> so she had a heart I thought attack. It'd be funny. I thought it'd be funny. I thought you were going to go really harsh and you all you did was text my mate saying I couldn't make golf. Yeah, because and I'm I feel, not sick in the head like really bad. <laughs> I don't want to do my exact words. Well, I don't want to do this anymore. It's plop. <laughs> my boss, Sally, who is the most incredible woman. She's so funny, like so clever, you know, runs an incredible business. My boss. And she just called me. She's she's out with her son at a football game. And you've just give her a heart attack. I apologize. I thought that was the game. She took it quite well, to be fair. She took it well, quite well. She took it well, but now I've got, I'll have to do some groveling now. <laughs> I'll have to bring me a game to next week's app. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas uh, on the flip side, I, I obviously said to, to you text Goodman, my mate, and said I couldn't make golf. And then I just texted him back saying, oh, that was our, but he went, yeah, fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the um, women we were working with, Jodie Kidd. So Jodie Kidd's a supermodel. Mm -hmm. She was a huge, huge supermodel. And went round her house and she's just got the most incredible story. You know, just some of the things she's achieved. Like she went on Top Gear. Mm. And then did the fastest lap and was on the top of the leaderboard for for months. I remember and then, that. I remember, yeah, I remember that. I remember being at the top. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, but, but then she decided to just take up motor racing. And then she was sponsored by Maserati and was racing all over the world. And then she was playing polo for the English, for, uh, for the British women's team. Uh, and she, you know, only started polo at the age of 27. She's wow. She's flown planes. She is incredible. Mm. Like she's a mom, you know, a hugely successful model. And, you know, I came away thinking, oh my God, there's so much in the world that you can do. Totally random, random things. But, you know, she was saying like, if she does something, she doesn't do it by halves. So if she goes into something, she just wants to be the best at it. And she is. She inspired you a little she bit. She really inspired me. Before you start racing cars, though, I think you should learn to reverse. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Touche. Really I'll take that. I'll take that. Really inspiring. Yeah, but can you do a 937.10 like me? <laughs> <laughs> Bet you can't. I can do a, a 3.3 million point 10 3 million. in any situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any situation. Doesn't matter what size of gap. It's it's a 3 million it's point. It's more 10. impressive than a reverse. Yeah, it is, yeah. Incredible takes hours but I, I was in the car with her she was my passenger and I, 
I, I was literally, my hands were slipping on the wheel because I felt so under pressure Nervous. for my drive. It could be because you constantly tell me how shit I am don't at driving. I always tell you how yes, shit you are. Yes, you do. I don't. I just, you know, I think you know yourself, you know. I think you know yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a great driver. You don't. Oh, do you? you don't think you're a great driver. What? I do. I am. Okay. What the hell do you mean? Well, just because I don't like go-kart racing? No, no, just just driving in general. I haven't really. got a need for speed, Pete. You don't have to speed. I think you're all right. I've been in the car with you a couple of times. Exactly, good, Ross. I think you're a good driver. God's thicker than water, Peter. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, no, I know it. How's your week been, Pete? What have you been up to? It's been good, mate. Yeah, do you know what? I've had a... Um, I, I've a neck had, injury. Yeah, I, I've had, karma has hit me. It's bit me on the ass. Yeah. Um, bit you in the neck. After me hammering Ab uh, when we were on holiday of her complaining every single day of a stiff neck, you can see it now. I, my neck is killing me and it's killed me for a week. I've had the exact same injury that Abby had and it's not fun. And it's I have been whinging. So Pete called me. We were in Mallorca and Pete had to go and see a chiropractor. And this chiropractor is world famous. He was seeing royal families from all over the world, mm. football teams from all over the world, A-list celebrities, and then Peter Crouch. And then Peter Crouch. And then Peter Crouch. <laughs> this fella was unbelievable. Like, Joe, big shout out. He's got a practice in, in Mallorca. Um, and I went to see him and I thought, you know, mm. you know, hopefully he helps me. But, I mean, it was incredibly painful. Obviously, manipulated my back, you know. And I've had that loads of times with football. You know, chiropractors and people um, doing certain things, kind of massage, you know, they click you, crack you, whatever. And But he was uh, the best I've ever had by, really? by none. I mean, you, you, people fly. I mean, he was in Belgium for, for years. And, you know, people from England, all over the world used to fly and see him. Now he's based in Mallorca. And, um, you know, it's quite a small little practice. Um, but, oh my God, two, two lads. And um, just... It was amazing. I came out of there and, uh, you know, I'm still not fixed, I'll be honest, but the what what he did to me... No, just... but he fixed you. Then you got on a flight and mm. then you had to sleep in a child's bed. Yeah. You know what he afterwards. said to me? He said to me, he said, are you married? I said, yes. He said, have you got children? And I said, yes. And he said, how many? I said, four. And he went, this is mainly down to stress. Fuck <laughs> off. He said that. Fuck off. He said it to me. Fuck off. What am I supposed to do? He, he literally said... You know, you stress. Should see him, single man. Yeah, <laughs> he's got not a knot. He's got the portion of a ballerina. Not, honestly, <laughs> not one knot in him. He just breezes through the port like that. Goes into work. It's easy for him. If there's anyone who's stressed in this household, it's me. I know it is you. That's you know, it. You portray that stress I, I onto been, me. I've been working so hard. Mm -hmm. and I'm I'm loving it I'm loving that little bit of independence I'm loving you know that I'm getting to be kind of me again you know having like three kids in four years mm -hmm. being at home with the kids we've had lockdown you know all of that stuff and you know we're finally coming out of that kind of tricky age and you know we're doing the podcast I'm I'm, I'm doing jobs and I'm loving it but you know unlike Peter when Pete goes to it he just walks out the door <laughs> I've got a plan. Who's minding the kids? Who's picking the kids up? Get the food shopping in. Set the pyjamas out at night. Get their outfits ready. You know, I'm fucking exhausted before I've even gone. Mm. But this moaning, this constant <laughs> moaning that you've just heard. No, yeah. it's not it's, moaning. It's, it's a it's... build-up of tension in my body now. No, it's you get second-hand stress. You know, you know, it's, it's like, it's, I, I'm stressed. It's your stress. I'm stressed. No, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There's, you know, I'm not complaining. But, but I'm going to complain. No, I'm not complaining, but it's things that have to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just escape that. There's, you know, when you've got a huge family, you're trying to work yourself, you've got a husband who's a child, you know, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. And I love it and I wouldn't change it for the world. But, you know, we're not getting enough sleep because we've got the whole musical bed thing going on at the mm. moment. On holiday, you know, Pete did a major um, faux pas with the rooms. And got us two rooms, but not interconnecting. So Pete and I didn't sleep in the same bed for a week, <laughs> which you probably enjoyed. Now, after you saying that he didn't have a wife and all of that stuff, you probably enjoyed that. No, actually. I don't enjoy that because you know. Well, I know for a fact you can't sleep without me, and I can't sleep. Well, I didn't you. enjoy it. No, I didn't enjoy it. No, I like I like sleeping with you. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> and um, you know, so. So that was quite tough because I, I actually feel like really lonely at night if, if you're not there. Like mm. if I'm not in bed to Pete, I have to bring the kids in with me. But mm. then you're getting like 
kicked. And d so we didn't sleep well. We were doing a lot of work while we were on holiday. Then we had to come home for two days, wa empty and wash six cases, put them back Fuck together. Yeah. Did, did we not stop hearing about that? <laughs> wow. I know, but, you know, we're fortunate we're going on another holiday. Yeah. But, you know, the clothes aren't going to wash themselves. <laughs> Anyway, what the you know what I've got now is basically a doctor's note from someone who's qualified to tell me that you are a pain in my neck. <laughs> <laughs> he literally said, "You're a pain in my neck." I was watching Mickey Flanagan last night in bed while you were snoring away. And, so um, tired. Of all he's this stress he's so nice to his wife, you know. Oh, he's not. It's the amount of gags he said about he his wife. So, the way he grovels for her, the way he grovels to his wife. And he, knew, no, he, he knows... No, he was talking about last night, he was talking about one where you have to mope around the house, you know, where you just do the, the mopey husband walk. You know, like, <laughs> you okay? When you, you're in the doghouse, you're like, do you need anything? Do you need a cup of tea? Until she comes out of that the kind of mood. Mm. That's what you say. That's not really nice, surely. But you've never groveled. I've groveled. I've groveled. I like the one where he uh, has to strip off to make a sausage butty. Have you heard that one? No. His wife doesn't let him eat meat, so he strips off to make a sausage sarny when she goes out. <laughs> What's he doesn't get it on his He's clothes? He's in the so he doesn't smell. <laughs> <laughs> sausage sarny butt naked in his house. It's so funny. <laughs> so yeah, amazing hot, even though we didn't sleep in the same bed together. Amazing hot. Still had a great time, didn't we? It was, yeah. It was a lovely, it's a lovely island, Mallorca. We met up with Tommy and Kaz, mm -hmm. our best friends, Christine and Christian. had a great day. Went out on the boat, went to some coves, went swimming, jet skis, sea bobs, sangria coming out of our asses. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we went to the pirate show. Mm. And it was so funny because you've got kind of like a wall of fame. Oh, I. And Pete was not on the wall. <laughs> and he's been with me every time we've been. So this is probably like our fourth time. on the wall. Are you on the wall? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm on the wall three like, times. They've like edited me out or something. <laughs> I'm like, what have you got against me on the wall? I'm on the wall three times, but you know. Oh, that's great. Some show though, isn't it? That was incredible. So, you know, they're like, well, they are acrobats. Yeah. But, you know, taking the kids that all that. You know that I've been before when the kids were babies, but the boys have never been before. So we we, have, we actually haven't been for five years, over mm. five years. The show was incredible. We get our chicken and chips, which I love. In the basket. In the basket, glass of wine. Top draw. And um, the boys were just mesmerised. They just loved it. We mm. got to meet the cast. You know, I walked in. I nearly had a heart attack. All the girls were in the splits, going hi. All like absolutely gorgeous. I was like, oh, God, I can't even do a cartwheel. Um. But no, it was fabulous, wasn't no, it? No, it's, it's a great... If you've got the chance, if you're in Mallorca, the pirate show is, is top-notch. Mm. Yeah, shout-out to Richie, who, who um, sorted us out again. Um, but no, we, we had the best time. And it, it was nice to go back to Mallorca, wasn't it? Yeah, we that for a while, we? Good, no. Good place. Great place. They were actually filming the Love Island final, weren't they? I know. And, uh, really? Yeah. yeah they but were. we were going to go. Was you? Yeah, because... Um, Maya said we could go down and watch, mm. but um, we didn't go in the end. But that would have been great to go. Mm, would have been, been good. Been I just wondered if they needed any, if they needed a new bombshell. <laughs> I said I was ready. I was prime. Casa I was prime. I could have, I could have just I'd done a couple of days in Casa like Amor. He's like that. Forget back this. In with sleeping a new on one, my own. Man. I'm going to Casa Amor. I'd have walked back in with a new one. <gasps> <laughs> Is that what you really want? <laughs> Babe, you, your muscles aren't big enough to go on the island. I know that. I know that. I wouldn't go in there. Is that where what? you want to go? What? Casa Amor? This is Casa Amor to me. Oh. Full of love. And it's a house. Let's get into the weekly wines, eh? Got one here. Uh, well, my weekly wine is that my husband wants to run off and go to Casa Amor. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just say a comment like that and expect me to just... I'm only joking. So I don't go to Casa Amor. As you said, I haven't got the guns for it. <laughs> That's the only thing. Yeah, but get, yeah literally. <laughs> the only, yeah. That's yeah. the only reason. Well, uh, I'll get there next year. Tell ya. <laughs> You're too old. You'll have to go on the overs. <laughs> the overs. If, if they do the overs in Love Island. Overs. Oh, Love, Love Island overs. <laughs> But does anyone want to? You leftovers. know, that's actually that's actually leftovers. Yeah, they, they must be doing that. Divorcee they are, one. They are doing a. Are they? One. Yeah, yeah. Davina McCall's hosting it, I think. Yeah, but does anyone want to watch old people kiss? No. 
Apparently the kids set them up, so the, the kids write in and be like, I want my mum to go out with this fella. Yeah, but is the mum going to like be doing them like sex positions that they do when they're doing like the reverse eagle or whatever it is? I'm like, what the hell's that? The Never heard of it. Whatever it is. Yeah, well, yeah. That, yeah, the reverse eagle. <laughs> you know. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely do not. <laughs> is the arms or the legs the wings? Well, we haven't done the reverse eagle <laughs> well, that much. You're too stiff. <laughs> Correct. You really am. Good old missionary. Good old missionary. Lights off, missionary. Lights off. Lights Subo off. on. Get it missionary. over with. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it over with. Close your eyes. Crazy Anatomy on pause. <laughs> Three minutes. You know, the worst thing is if you do pause something and you go back to it and you go, well, oh, okay, no, that wasn't that long. <laughs> Well, that's what happens. You can see the minutes. Three minute oh, one. Bollocks. <laughs> yeah, but... Barely got a dab on. Uh, you've changed, you. So have you. Uh, anyway, the audience whines, right? Let's get into them. I live with my partner and she makes me have a shower before I get into bed every night, regardless of the state or the time. Of I my agree state. with that. Do you? Yeah. Sometimes I'm exhausted. I just want to pass out but she insists on me showering how do i get her to understand my side well we, there is no your side you wouldn't say, say to me sometimes i go to bed and like shower first thing in the morning like definitely but sometimes at night like unless i've been out or you, you know, get in my bath well yeah sometimes <laughs> you don't want that to happen do you often what you'd rather that didn't happen often which me getting in your bath yeah, not with me after me mm. oh right sorry Although you did get in last night, I was like, get out. <laughs> I hate that. It's it's like, Pete's pretty awkward to share the bath as well. Yeah, he is. It's like getting in bed with a fucking, fucking... bicycle. <laughs> in the, it's like driving through a puddle on a bicycle. <laughs> you know, like, like trolleys that are like deserted <laughs> in a puddle. A like big praying mantis trying to get in behind you. <laughs> No, I actually like it, but... Oh, that's... Well, you don't really, do I you? Do, just, I, I, I do. I do, but... Don't worry, it won't happen again. Oh, don't say that. Thought it'd be nice and romantic if I got in. Not a fucking bicycle going for a pun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like getting my bath. But I think if you come in, you're absolutely blathered. You don't want to be jumping in the shower. Oh, that's, even, kind of... that's even more reason. To get in the shower before bed, you've been in a smelly pub, full of germs, people coughing and spluttering, all touching like the bar, it was millions of hands and spilt beer and everything's been on, and you expect to get into a clean bed? Slipping Absolutely hazards. not. I think there are times where you just, you want to just fall into bed, you're like knackered. I think you don't... I bath my kids every night before bed. Yeah, so they're clean saying... going to bed. You have a better sleep when you're clean. Yeah, no, I agree. I think, you know, maybe, you know, we're clean in this family, I would say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, but I, I sometimes don't have a shower at night. Depends what I've done. I might have one in the afternoon. Yeah, because if you walk the dog, you'll get a shower. Or I'll play golf or something. Like, I'll have a shower 100% or a bath. But then I, I, I'm not going to then go have another one at night. Mm. But I think there are times where you just you want to go, go to sleep. Yeah, but there's nothing better than smelling someone clean in bed. Mm, but you wouldn't pull me on it if I if I was knackered and I just went, I'm getting into bed. You wouldn't go, no, get in that shower. Yeah, but you're not a smelly person. You're very clean. You're a smell of washing powder. Well, you know, maybe this, this a friend of mine actually who will remain nameless. Oh. I remember, um, yeah, sometimes he's smelly. Um, but I remember. <laughs> I he, know this is. He was with a girl, and um, she she was like, oh, you know, they're just get, getting ready to go for it, and then. She said, let's jump in the shower, eh? <laughs> we are so romantic. <laughs> and he said he got in there and she was like scrubbing him. <laughs> he said, this isn't romantic. And she was like proper like scrub. I know who that is. It's <laughs> revolting. Can you well, tell him he's a smelly bastard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's got a nickname. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, he said it was, it was hilarious. So funny. Great banter. I think he needs to just get a shower. Well, and, and I think sometimes she has to be a bit more understanding. He might have had a long day. She exactly. To... <sighs> Hi both. My weekly wine relates to the tubs of butter. Why do people attack the butter? 
Why can't they just smoothly scoop the butter out? Why do they need to hack it all? Also, people, when they wipe the edge of the knife on the tub to get the leftover butter off the knife with, like, crumbs on it, yuck. What, they, they, their mouth? <laughs> no. <laughs> you get the, the... I thought they were, like, doing butter and then going out at the, at the end. No. I've no. seen people do that, though. Oh, have man, you? No. Vegan. I have seen that. They, they got out Ugh. at the end. No way. I have seen I that. I couldn't lick raw butter. No, just a little bit on the end. I've I've seen people do You've that. You've done it. I, I swear yeah, my life I've done that. I've heard the people who do no, that. No, 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 I swear to you, I wouldn't do that. No, because I remember seeing it. You didn't put much oh, butter on that toast last night that you made. No, I had loads. It's it sunk in. Yeah, because you didn't toast the bread well enough. Oh, right, I'll bear that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! When you're lying in bed and I'm making you toast, <laughs> <laughs> I'll bear it all in mind. You made your own. I I made lamb chops last night. <sighs> Came in from work. Made lamb chops, did the washing. So don't be complaining about making. Oh, okay, stuff. all right, well done. Um, the this this but, this butter thing though, um, I do get it. People hack it and stuff like that. Mm. It's like nosing the brie. Obviously, have you heard of this one? No. So you know when you got the cheese board out, right? Yeah. And and I remember I'd see I just go straight straight off the nose, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone very posh said to me once, "Oh, we've nosed the brie." <laughs> so excuse me, you've nosed the brie. I said, like, what are you talking about? I just get the surely no, you've got to like go from the side or something. So you don't you don't nose the brie. <laughs> you don't chop no, the little no, triangle no, off the end. Like slice. slice a little so it looks pleasant. That's not right, though. Well, like, you know, so you, it's like it's in What's a triangle. Worse? I, 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 no, would, just go, I would nose you, the brie. You nose the brie, right? Would, so you nose the brie and then scoop it out and leave just the rind. Oh. Rind. Yeah, that, I don't do that in our house, but you know. I don't give a, don't give a fuck about it, the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> but not in a restaurant or something like that. Like, yeah, well, like, anyway, I, I didn't realise that was a thing, but you don't, you've got to go from the side, so it, go, it goes back nicely. you got cheese shamed. Mm. Well, I hate, uh, I think I do it like twice a week, get the butter out the fridge and drop it on the floor. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the plastic tub always Just cracks. cracks. Mm. hate that. I, I, did, I had a dog hair in, in my butter, butter last night. Yeah, you know why? Because you dropped it on the floor now. I know that. No, <laughs> not, not, not because of that. Because when I was making the mash last night, I had the butter out. And I went out and I came back and Jeffrey was just licking the butter. Oh, uh, and you put it, what, back, you put it back in the fridge? I didn't Jesus put it back in the Christ. fridge. Ellie cleaned the kitchen. So I just told you I had a dog here. And now I, I thought it was because you dropped it and put it back. I didn't realise he was licking the butter. Straight and up. then I put it on my toast. I also forgot because I ate some of that toast. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant to say, oh, my I need to throw that away. God. But I, I... Here she is going, I'll shower before bed. Yeah. You must shower before bed. But let the dog lick the butter and put it back in the fridge. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I went out the room. Oh, my God. I think I was putting the kids to bed and Ellie went, I'll do the kitchen. And I forgot to say to her, put that butter in the bin because mm. the dog jumped up and was licking it all. Very oh. bad for dogs that you know. Fucking bad for me when I <laughs> like he's licking his balls all day and then I'm eating the butter don't that he's that. licked. Don't forget his ass. Wow, his ass, everything. He sniffs, he eats dog shit on the walks. <laughs> Fucking hell, bro. <laughs> but make sure you get a shower for bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's our dog. Oh, it's our oh, dog. Funny. Wow. <sighs> It's like when you were a kid, you used to have an ice cream and let the dog lick it and then lick it again. No Did way. you ever do that? No, no. I did. It's a dog, babe. I love the dog, but I don't want to lick it. <laughs> it licks your face? I don't particularly like that either. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, quite the opposite of a weekly wine, but just been surprised early from my partner that not only is he taking me to Paris for my 30th in December, but he's also planned and booked a small, beautiful elopement wedding with our close family and friends for New York, for, sorry, for New Year's Eve in What's front of done? the Eiffel Tower. I could not stop crying when he revealed it all to me. He was worried someone might slip up and tell me between now and then, please keep me anonymous uh, as we want to keep it in our happy little bubble. But I was happy to share it with you guys. Hashtag the boy did good. Oh. Wow. That is nice. But so, I smell a rat. But like, why can't, you should look at the good side of that. Like he's done, like she is, she's gone to boy did good. I know if I did that, you'd go, oh, the wedding's going to be crap. You know, it's, you 100% would say that if I was planning the wedding. 
You might have done it to keep cost down. Do you know, like a little small little parish number. Clever. Do you know what I mean? Get the order start over. Yeah, you can bring your mum and dad. That's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like compared to like a full on full shebang wedding. Yeah, just kept it small. I like the idea mean? of like a man wanting to marry you so much he plans the wedding and wants you to elope you to a different country. Yeah, the word elope means elope smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's gone like. Oh, um, no, I don't think elope. You know, oh, we want the big. She might have said the whole way. I want the yeah. full works. Like the you know, I can't wait. And the all big that. castle, you know, three days. And you know, he's gone, we'll elope. Yeah. And I'll do it romantic in Paris. So she, I don't See, say, I think elope. <laughs> that's what he's done. No, I, don't I think that's the clever. word elope is so romantic. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine Gretna Green, 16 year olds. If we'd have eloped to Vegas and done a quick job, my dad come did that. Back. Well, I, he's, I, a t- he's a minge bag. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, listen, uh, I, I hope it's for good reasons. I'm sure it is. And he's just being an amazing fella, I think, because we might have blown him up here. Yeah. I, I I do love that kind of. It does make you feel special if a guy like plans something, like a little secret trip or a little secret night out, and all you've got to do is turn up and be surprised. Mm. It's nothing better. It's hard to do that to you though. You like to be in control of everything. Okay, talking about eloping and young love. That's what we're going to talk about today. We've had a few people write in. About with funny stories mm. about you know their first boyfriends or disasters and yeah, it's kind of like hard to navigate certainly at school and stuff like mm. in the early days, isn't it? Let me I, this sets it up nicely. I think my first love is still my love. We met at school. We've been together since we were thirteen. Sixteen years later, we're married with three children. I can't wait till our eldest gets up to secondary school in three years' time, and we can shove it in all our old teachers' faces who used to say we'd never last. Oh. Uh, we weren't the best behaved in school and now we're getting three mini versions of us. <laughs> Jason and Stacey, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing though that, isn't it? When you last the test of time. Yeah, but we know so many people. We've like done that. Sids and Chrissy, they were together at school. Mm-hmm. Jason and Stacey were basically school. Mm. Well, they met in Burger King and Falaraki, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> it was something along those they lines. Yeah. Huh? Where's Falaraki? Oh, uh, it's Greece, isn't it? Not? I think. I thought it was Wales. No, 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 no. 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 It's like a Magaluf, Iron Upper, oh, yeah. Valaraki. You know, they met in Burger King Coswell. at like five in the morning. It's been together ever since they were teenagers. You'd just, and you'd That's never say that would last, would you? You know? No. no. Especially on that type of holiday. And it's a scouser and a mank. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yeah, um, is another one. So point. many people. But to be fair, Pete, I was 19 when I met you. Mm. That's a long time. I was saying, like, literally. I've been with you half my life. Yeah, that's a long time. It's a long time. Mm. It's good. Got another one here. Look, my mum's first crush was her older brother's friend who lived across the street when she was growing up. She thought he was gorgeous and of course he didn't look twice at her as she was just his mate's little sister. When um, I was younger and fancied lads, she used to tell me about her neighbour brother's friend uh, and I always knew his name, Jeff Clancy. Who would have thought 30 years later I'd be listening to a weekly podcast by his daughter? What? How mad's that? No way. What? What was her name? <laughs> That's blown me away. I have to read that again. My mum's, so, my mum's first crush was her older brother's friend who lived across the street. So what was the friend called? Sinon. We can probably find out, to be fair. We'll find you. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, got it. Listen. To be fair, my dad was unreal looking. Wasn't he? I don't why I didn't know him. Yeah, but, but you've seen pictures of my dad. He um, was so handsome. Yeah, no, he was. He still yeah. is. He's yeah. just bald. Yeah, isn't that amazing though? Mm. That's, we, we'll have to find out who that is. I'll message there. I'll message yeah, again. we'll have to find out. All right, another one here. My first boyfriend was 18 and I was 16. So uh, I loved that he could drive. However, he did also play the guitar and sang to me. It was so orcs. And if you've seen the new Barbie film, it brought back those memories. <laughs> <laughs> well, I dumped him when he was sat on my mum's drive at midnight, waiting for me to get back from holiday. A bit harsh, isn't it? <laughs> I've never had, like, when I was little in school, like... You know, someone who was like obsessed with me would like cry if I dumped them or anything. <laughs> I really wanted that. 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like in like a teen movie. Mm-hmm. I, I had one girl that was really wanted to, to be with me. Who? You, like, I'm talking first school, like primary school. But I was just... I used to love the fact that she loved... She really liked me. But I... This wasn't fucking... Then you used to... Karen? No. No, it's another one. Um... <laughs> She, yeah, and everyone kept telling me, oh, she really likes you and all that. And then all I'd do is, like, she'd come watch me play football and stuff. And I'd try and play football better <laughs> because I loved it. But I'd be a nervous wreck. <laughs> <laughs> she came near me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd play football and I'd go, yeah. And everyone would go to me, oh, she fancy you. And go, oh, yeah, you know, I don't want, I'm not going to want a girlfriend. <laughs> I loved it, but I'm just a nervous wreck. She'd come over to me and go, oh. Leave me alone. <laughs> I can't remember anyone fancying me in school. I remember we used to like, in, in first school as well, in primary school, we used to kind of get a boyfriend on the playground just to get a Valentine's present and then get it and dump them. Mm. I did that a few times. Did you ever play Kiss Chase? Mm. I played that. So what did you do? I kissed someone on the coat. coat? Yeah, Kiss Chase, yeah. That actually was probably the furthest I went for about six years. <laughs> I kissed her on the coat and I was claiming it. All my mates were like, you know, how far have you got? That was the conversation. How, and I, I once kissed a girl on the coat and kissed Chase. Well, how did you do that? Ages. Well, she she kind of like pretended to kind of like... Be caught. Yeah, get caught. And I went on the coat. I went, oh my God, I'm going to actually kiss her. I have to kiss her now in this game. <laughs> Shits myself and kissed her on the coat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You've got such vivid memories. Yeah, when I you, remember that clearest day. Really I remember the name of them and everything. I wouldn't reveal it, though. <laughs> she might want another kiss on the coat. <laughs> <laughs> High opinion of yourself in this um, podcast. No, no. Love that, Casa Amor. Hello. Kissing you, on the coast. You ordered the shagger. Hello, yeah. <laughs> Top shagger. <laughs> Gross. Um, oh, dear. What about with the girls now? Obviously, Sophia's getting the age where she's going to start dating. Have you, have you scared? Been... scared you. Well, she had a boyfriend. Oh, is she? How did you handle that? Well. I was really into it. You're like, you're like, Pro boyfriends and stuff. I'm not pro boyfriends. I am pro being able to talk to your parents about things. You know, because yeah, I get that. when I was growing up, I would never tell my mum anything. You know, I'd always <laughs> lie. I was always lie to my parents. So, like, when we go out and like meet boys or whatever, like, still in school, teen years, we would just say we're going to our friend's house and stuff. And I felt like I could never, I- I'd feel too embarrassed or. I found the whole thing. So embarrassing at school for some reason. I don't so know. So did why. you never bring it like a girl home? No, it was it was so hard for me to do. I couldn't do it. Like I, I would like I say that girl obviously who lived opposite me, like she was just my mate. But I'd bring her home. My dad always remember my dad going like Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> and it would make me die inside. But really I, I just know it's only ban it's only he's only having a bit of fun. But I, I found it so hard to kind of get over that like them taking the piss out of me yeah. stage. And I don't know why it meant so much in those days. <laughs> yeah. Like someone said to me now, oh, I've got a new girlfriend. I go, yeah, I have. And it's over, isn't it? Yeah. But I'd go, fuck, oh no. Oh, God. Dad, he's, doing that noise. Dad. he's doing that noise again. Kevin. Oh, I'd yeah. be like, he'd go, <laughs> I go, get out. I can't ever see you again. <laughs> see, I don't want to do that to my kids. Oh, yeah. I don't want to embarrass them yeah. or like humiliate them or anything like but that. But we do all the time. That's a lie because those little things that you say, like, ooh, you got a boyfriend. We were doing that all the time. It's character building, I think. You need to be embarrassed as a kid because then it makes you not not be, be embarrassed when you're older. Doesn't it? It's weird how things really matter, don't they? It's like even with Sophia, you know, like it's things that we take the piss out of before and she goes, shut up, no. They really take it to heart. Like, yeah, I can't go, I've... oh, I love that, that new dress you've got. And she's like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Is it she? I'm like, God. It's weird. I, I don't know what the psychology is. It no, but I, I want I want them to be able to talk to me and feel like, and, you know, when Sophia come in and said she had a boyfriend, I was like, but it's not a boyfriend. Yeah. You know, they've just started a new school. It's co-ed. So it's boys and girls mixed. And they're all, you know, co- turned into teenagers. And it's like a novelty. And it's like, oh. And she's never spoken to this boy. And none of the other girls have. They've, they've all seemed to have boyfriends, but they're not going out with each other anymore. Yeah. Well, it's not in that sense of the word, is it really? 
No. Um, but yeah, it's it, it, it's a weird one at, at school. Mm. I mean, like I say, I, I found it all really, really embarrassing. Well, I went to a all girls school. Oh, so you were you were a goer then? No. <laughs> we used to see all the boys on the bus going to school. The highlight of the day. <laughs> That's what I mean. You come I left ke- after school. You don't think like if you go to a girls' school, you get keen as mustard. Is that a genuine thing or not? No. Oh, I think it is. Only because I, I, this is the co-ed kind of debate, isn't it? I suppose like some people are very staunch boys' schools, girls' schools. Some people are very staunch mixed schools. Um, staunch. Yeah, like they. That's the, what they believe in. Um, I, I, you know, because I, I think sometimes girls maybe if girls they go to a girls' school, if they go to a girls' school, I think sometimes they could build up what boys. Whereas actually, if they see boys, they realise they're actually they're. Complete dickheads at that age, <laughs> so mm. that they would they wouldn't put them on a pedestal. Maybe it's my kind of view on it. Mm. They might think, "Oh, boys, you know, like can't wait to meet one." <laughs> but actually, when they're at their school, they realise they're just like, you know, playing in dog shit, <laughs> <laughs> fucking <laughs> kicking the ball around. When I when like I went imbeciles. to like the, the open day for the school, like all the, all the little girls and all like quite prim and proper and. Yeah acting sensible and the boys were literally all rolling around wrestling <laughs> and they looked like too big to be behaving mm. like that you're like god get I, up. I mean i was doing that i remember i've got walking to school once and uh we, we used to play this game where we trip each other up but i remember you but if you left your leg in and then raised it as they try and get over the leg then they then they would go down <laughs> so you realize that you trip that's enough but then you go higher and as they try and they go down properly right and i always remember it on the way to school once the bus stopped and there was a load of the sick form girls on the bus and my mom ate um went like that and then i went again and he went down on in front of the sixth form and all the girls stood up and were laughing at him <laughs> it was the best <laughs> Why are boys best. obsessed with t- with six form girls? Oh, it, was, it was the best trip up ever. I got he was kept in front of the six form girls in school once, full on undies down and everything. <laughs> <laughs> like undies eight, down, year eight, everything down. <laughs> it was the worst moments of my life. Oh, horrendous, <laughs> horrendous. But like, actually, <clears throat> the lad in question, Herman, um, he was actually had a sniff with one of the six form girls. We were we were quite like, year ten, year eleven. And he thought he had a sniff and she was on the bus. And when I tripped him and he went down, oh, it was one of my finest moments. <laughs> He's always falling over Herman, isn't he? <laughs> All the time. Like, didn't he get slapped by a girl once as oh, well? Oh, that was my, one of my favourite moments as well. <laughs> on the same stretch of road. <laughs> she was hard as nails, to be fair. <laughs> and, uh, she, she was hard. And her brothers were even harder. Oh God. We were walking down the road and I saw it coming. For some coming. context, like Herman's like a big guy. Yeah. So like six foot three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a handsome amazing. guy. Great lad. But he's also, he's also a bit, bit of the target. Oh, uh, I saw like, this loveliest coming. Loveliest guy. You know Herman? Yeah, I've met him, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing, right? So it was me, I think it might have been Hobden, my other pal. So it was me, Hobden and... <laughs> um, <laughs> walking down the road, right? I've seen this girl coming around. She was like, she's heavy duty, do you know what I mean? Like, her brother's... <laughs> <laughs> brothers were because even if you wanted to have a go back her brothers would absolutely <laughs> annihilate you right so we're walking down this road I've seen her come but she's got this march on right so oh God. she's in a bad mood right so I've gone whoa I've seen it happening but I didn't tell her but... <laughs> <laughs> so I've walked so that, you know there's a tree in the road right she's walking down the centre of the pavement yeah. right? I'm thinking whoa so I just chat away with her and I've seen it out the corner of my eye and I went right so you know when you go round the outside of the tree back, mate, so, I'm, so I've gone I've gone kind of outside the tree onto the road a little bit Carried on walking just to let this allow this to happen, <laughs> and then she's barged, you know, done the old barge trick, <sighs> barged into him. She, what, what are you giving it? And he's gone, uh, nothing. She just cracked him round <laughs> <laughs> on the face with this slap. <laughs> what, what are you going to do about it? And he went, nothing. <laughs> and then anyway, I was still marching on, not even pretending it's not even happening. <laughs> <laughs> I've come back to the group and I've gone you shit yourself <laughs> I said you big tart <laughs> said you just like the you've just been us. beaten up by a woman it wasn't a woman it was a girl she's just been beaten up by a girl 
<laughs> and oh, I didn't let him forget it God. for weeks. Oh, God. Oh, I had so the best fun. time at school, honestly. I really did. I, I loved, loved it. School. I loved school. Oh, God, that was brilliant. Do you know what? It's nice going down memory lane. I'll, I'll be honest with you, like my school times, although it was a bit of a gorp, um, were the best times of my life. I just found them so, it was so much fun. I, you know, obviously my group of mates that I've got still mates with today, I had such a laugh with them, such a yeah. laugh. It's great to reminisce, but I, I do love the idea of, you know, people meeting in school and being together forever. You know, we, we, thing, we, yeah. we've got so many friends who are like that. Mm. And I even class us, is that really? Like, mm. I was 19, you 24. Mm. Yeah, you were still a baby. You know, it's a, it's a long time. Yeah. Like, I actually don't, you know, well, you I was a teenager. If we, you know, we, we, we're we 60 odd, you know, 70 odd. If I, if, we, if someone asks a story, say, I met Ab when we were 19, you're like, oh, you were babies. I know. Like, you've been together this long. No, but I think that now. So, yeah, it's, it's so young like imagine like being so settling down at like 19 mm -hmm. like if Sophia was saying that to me I'd be like I'm moving in with my boyfriend and you know gonna try for a baby I wanna get married I'd be like uh, whoa <laughs> hold on you're not <laughs> so you're 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 just basically telling her to, to not do any of the things that you did yeah well not no because it worked for us but it's quite rare mm. it is rare mm, I would say so very rare I think especially in this day and age now Mm. Like I think it was the done thing, our parents and and their parents. But, yeah. But but I think in this day and age, you now, know, move, moving in with a boy at like nineteen, twenty is quite early, don't you think? Uh, yeah, 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 very early. And, and Sophia then, wanted to move out because I was living with my mom. Move out of our home and move in with a boy. I'd be who was like five years older than it. I'd be like, you know. Yeah. Just think about and it then, like that. And then for it to actually last is a, mm. it's probably a small percentage of that happening. And does it last after four kids? <laughs> and I'm oh, talking about puppy love. Getting a puppy. Oh, yeah. What type? Finally. It's a Cavapoo. Cavapoo? Mm hmm. I don't know them. It's a Cavalier King Charles <laughs> and a poodle mixed. So you crack piece? I, I, I haven't actually said yes or no. I'm just Indifference. allowing this pipe dream to, to, to unfold. I, I think it's the most ridiculous idea I've ever heard, if I'm honest. Well, I just think. We can't have another baby. You've said no to that. Why would you want another baby? Because mine are grown up. <laughs> Chris wants for like four. <laughs> I know, but... <laughs> we're literally just getting out of nappies now. <laughs> no, we're not. He's been out of nappies since he was two. Thank you very much. You know what I mean? It's still like, you know, he's still a baby, but not, you know? He's just going into reception this, this September. I, I don't know if it's like a natural thing that women feel when they're like nearly 10 and 40. Mm. The kids are growing up. You can feel it somewhere else then. What? You can feel it somewhere else. Feed what? Feel You can feel that, that I want another baby somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't know if it's like n nature's way of saying to you like... Of putting me in an early grave. No. <laughs> Will you let me finish? It's a ridiculous idea. Don't, no, I'm what, just... Like how, how hard do you want life to be? Like you've got, got a great life. No, I know. Stop making it hard. But I, I am just saying... Maybe it's nature's what No, like when a, wim a woman's getting to the age where... Your time's where ticking, basically. Your time's so, ticking. Yeah. So what, you want to get a cavapoo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the time's way you, ticking, let's get a cavapoo. The way you fucking it's the worst ch idea. Ch it's, twist things. It's I don't understand it. You know, you've got children, lots of them. We've got a dog, we've got two cats. You want to make things harder again? Jeffrey needs a friend, Pete. <sighs> so Jeffrey do I. I need a friend. friend. It's just so silly. But whatever you want to do, whatever makes you happy. Well, that's not a very nice thing to say. Well, it doesn't make me happy, but you're going ahead with it. <laughs> but it will. <laughs> I don't get it. This conversation. Well, we were playing last night in bed. All names for the puppy. No, so you were playing acting. it at me while I was watching something. You're just acting all hard now on the no, podcast. You, you were you were playing the, the song game. I what did I my exact words? What to you was when you showed it? Like, like I said, babe, I'm not interested in that. You said, oh, it's so cute though. I said it's a lovely dog, yeah, but not for us. Someone would be so happy with that. You did not say that. You said it's so I, cute, what? and then I said, do you like Jimmy? Do you like the name Jimmy or something else? And you were like, I, th I think I like Jimmy. Jimmy and Jeffrey. That's what you said. I said I like the name Jimmy for a dog, yeah. <laughs> so not our dog. You're just such a little liar. No, if someone got that dog and called it Jimmy, I'd be so pleased with them. Are you um are you just trying to like own authority on this podcast? 
No, because I you're told, an animal lover. I, I told you just that give I it, like just, animals. Just admit it, I you're like an going animal to lover. the zoo and looking at animals. I no, like you people. don't. You don't like zoos. I do like zoos. You do not? I do. Why? You think they should be set free? <laughs> I like looking at animals. I like animals in From general, far. but I just don't like them all around me all the time. And I, I don't Babe, like... you did last week's episode with the cat on your knee the whole time. <laughs> you did two hours with the cat on your knee. What are you talking evil. about? You put, it, you put it in here with me. What I'm saying is I'll get a dog and I'll Ross, love it. did I put the cat in here? Mm, I, it came another turn of cord. My problem is here, Ross, is... I don't need another thing to love. I've said this many a time. I don't need... I love, I've got what I, I love. And if you bring it in here, I'm going to love it, aren't I? And I don't want to because it's going to be You can never harder. feel too much love. I think you can. I think you can. How can you feel too much love? No, because it, it's you just put more love in your to, heart. To, it's another thing to kind of worry about that you don't, we don't need. It's another thing well, to El's, kind of worry. Well, Elsa, chill. Look after it. All right, can we get into the agony abs? We'll discuss that one off air if that's okay. Um, hi, Abby and Pete. Absolutely loving the podcast. It really makes my morning on the way to walk, on the walk to work. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> on the work to walk. My ab agony ab is my boyfriend's demand for a spoon before he leaves for work in the morning. At first, I thought it was quite nice that he wanted a cuddle before he left. <laughs> <laughs> but he wanted an actual spoon for his lunch. <laughs> oh my god, my brain's gone. I used to hate it when you get a pack lunch in school with a yogurt and your mum would never put a spoon in. Oh, yeah, yeah, never. How annoying. Well, She'd never put a spoon in, would she? Would yours? Never, no. I know. But the, I didn't have a pack lunch at school, the school dinners. I had to pack lunch in the summer and hot dinners in the winter. Mm, same. I always thought a little less of the people that had pack lunches. <laughs> Why? I don't know. <laughs> Peasants. No, it wasn't that. It was just like, <laughs> no, it wasn't like, like, it wasn't nothing bad. It was just, I just assumed what, like, grow up and have a school dinner. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was like, oh, I can't have, I'm gluten free. <laughs> you know, I can't have these, I can't have what they provide because I need these sandwiches. I you know, it's all a bit pretentious. So they just they get a school dinner down you. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> the icky twizzle down you and shit. I used, I, used I used to eat the same thing every day what? sausage, beans, and chips. Oh, yeah. School uh, dinners were unreal, I And thought. then I had um, that sponge cake with the icing and the hundred and thousands on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice. I love that. Yeah, it, it, she thought it was quite nice, uh, wanting a cuddle before he left. However, I've started to notice that he's setting his alarm extra early to ask me to spoon him. He initially began nudging me to roll over, but now he has explicitly started to demand spoon, which I find quite strange and a tad passive aggressive. <laughs> I feel bad bringing it up to him as he clearly wants some affection before work, but he wakes up so early and it's starting to get annoying. What should I do, Megan? So does he just say spoon? Looks that way, yeah. Like well, sit. <laughs> spoon. It's like... Like he goes, he's flipped over like that and goes, spoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't they just cuddle anyway? Well, we cuddle no until man, we go to sleep, don't we? Yeah, but no, and then, no man has actually wanted to spoon in his life. The, no. The spoon, the spoon leads bullshit. to uh, what I think he, he actually wants. <laughs> That's not true. No, I think he's. I think he's setting his alarm early enough for the spoon to lead into potentially other things. From a man's point of view. So you only spoon me. For no, me. I love spooning. <laughs> I'm saying me. I'm talking about there's plenty every of, other man. Plenty of men out there <laughs> that regularly spoon to potentially. I actually prefer spooning you than yeah. you spooning. I like you spooning me actually. I do I like I like being the spooner or the spoonie. Do you prefer spooning or getting spooned? Uh, no, I think I prefer spooning. Spooning? Mm. Do you? But I do, I do. It's nice to change, isn't it? Variety is a spice of life. <laughs> but but um, I'm worried. I prefer spooning. Do you, Ross? Um, yeah, I think I prefer to to beat the spooner. Mm. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I like the way you reach your hand round there. Yeah. <laughs> the spooner. <laughs> I'm worried that he set his alarm much earlier to give him time just in case the spooning turns. I don't know, but I'm just... Or maybe he's got like a really stressful job and he feels that she's like a really powerful woman. So he wants her to spoon him to like 
some of their like powerfulness will rub onto him and he feels more confident set for the day. Yeah, and I think sometimes like actually I if I've got a really shit day ahead of me and I know it's I th- I'm not into this and I'm lying kind of in bed with you spooning you it's quite a nice thing you go like oh this is great here and I've got to do that shit day. There you go. It's that is quite nice. I do feel that sometimes. When do you do shit days? Not often. But there are there are things where you know. Shit, I've got to go to golf again. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to go. Bollocks, I've got a day with Ab today. <laughs> I don't want to go to golf. <laughs> so, no. There, there, you cocky know, little bastard, aren't you, today? Cocky. It's, you know, I'm just saying, like, there, there, if you've got a day plan that you, you've got a few things that you don't particularly want to do, then it is nice. You go, oh, I'm in bed with the girl I love. But he's definitely after some more. A pagan. Fork. <laughs> yes. It's fork. Want a fork? Yeah, he's spooning to potentially get a fork. <laughs> I can have. Please help. My husband and I had a baby earlier this year, and he gets six months paternity leave, which some would say was amazing. And why is this a moan? Well, yes, it's precious time he's really lucky to have with the kids, and it's special for sure. However, I find it really hard being stuck with each other twenty four seven. We did lockdown together, pre-kids, and it was good. But with kids, it's a different ball game. I also feel like he's at a loose end and spends most of his time trying to annoy me. Should I stop moaning and be grateful, or am I being reasonable and I have the right to moan him? I think we hear this a lot, don't we? I think when you're spending time, like when you've got separate things going on, and then yeah, but when that lockdown ends... Lockdown was a lot of... It's tough on a lot a, of people. A lot of people actually realise, God, I don't like you. Mm. You know, because people are so busy with their own lives, their own careers. And, you know, if you boil it down to minutes in the day, probably spend about an hour or two together before they go to bed. Mm-hmm. So th- there isn't that time to go, oh, I can't stand him. Look, I hate the way he breathes. I hate the way he eats. I hate his banter. <laughs> you know. That's just you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean? We're, uh, yeah, that's we're what actually the opposite. Well, I- we actually don't speak when we're away from each other. Oh yeah, 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 I get you. We we argue quite a lot when if I'm away. No, not if just you're away. If we're away from each other. So. Yeah, if we're away from each other, like you don't like me going to work, do you? You're like, oh, what am I gonna do? <laughs> 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 That's what you said. <laughs> That's what you said. Uh, I do get over it, like, but uh, I do think that. Do babe, do you think that? Be a man. <laughs> Say it. Say what you say to me to the nation. <laughs> I hate being away from you. Always. Oh no, we're joking. I do. I do find your company. I'd like your company. I have fun with you. I do. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying, she doesn't like her husband's company. Like you know, on a daily basis, she. The thought of six months with him is like, oh fuck it out. Oh, I'd love you to take six months off. Yeah, I'd like to have That'd six be heaven. Would be, I think it would be nice. and That's what I'm saying, we do get on, but there are lots of people that, that find it really annoying and then it becomes little things really build that's up. That's why the dogs, that's why a dog is good in a relationship. Because, you know, if you feel like a little bit suffocated or you need a little time out, you can go and walk the dog. There are, I'm not going to lie, there are times back. where you do want, you do need to do your own thing. <clears throat> yeah. But I feel it's, it's not just you feels that I feel that as well. Yeah, like you, you need to you need to do your own stuff. It's healthy, but he's got six months off and she's dreading it. <laughs> I'm not sure that's great. You should get a hobby, maybe. Yeah. Mm. I feel like adding a dog to the mix might be problematic. Yeah, but another. he could just say, right, I'm going to take the baby, the new baby, for a walk. Mm. Go and have a shower. Go and get your nails done. Go meet your friends for a coffee. You know, have little designated zones. That doesn't sound great for him, though. That one. Like, yeah. Not... No, but she, she's saying he's got nothing to do. He's at a loose end, so she could give him things to do. Oh, yeah, he could have a hobby. He, he could he'd take the her. He needs to go and do stuff. Like, go to yeah. the gym. And, and, you know, I remember when the, ba- when the kids were babies. I used to like doing stuff on my own with them. I used to really enjoy that mm. sometimes. Yeah, Pete had sent me a picture. Like, if he'd have like a daddy day. And he'd send me a picture like, oh, we're all in, we're all having out, out for lunch. Good. And he'd send me pictures of like 
The baby's in like a vest <laughs> with like a cardigan over. They're like the vest, the clippy yeah, vest yeah, yeah. that like um, <clears throat> go under go the outfit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd just have that on the baby <laughs> with like a cardigan and like no shoes. And I'd be like, oh my God. And the kids would have like the most ridiculous outfits on like totally mit mismatched with school shoes and like a school <laughs> hairband. It'd be like a Saturday afternoon going to like a lovely restaurant and I'd be like, oh my God. Peter. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you would be staying dead with us. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't have a clue what I was doing, but it was they were good days, and I think it's good to bond comes sometimes on your own. Yeah. With your kids. Next one. Uh, all right. Hey, Abby and Pete. Uh, I've been fooling around with my man with a man much younger than me, ten years. Oof. And while the sex is great, and I really Lucky like bitch. him. <laughs> Are you gonna say that, <laughs> Kim? Kim. <I'm>, I'm, uh, <laughs> It's a new thing now, girls. It's a new thing. Good luck, Cha. I'm not uh, saying for me. I've, I haven't <laughs> spent every second of the day with you. I've just said it on air. You also said lucky girl. Well, her ex must have been a little shit. The sex is great and I Oof. really like him. And he doesn't want anything right now. As he said, oh. he's not ready. But he probably will in a few months' time. He might be ready. We meet up casually but it always seems to be on his terms. When I try to instigate it, it doesn't materialise. I like him a lot, but I'm also not sure if it will work as a real-life relationship. My question is, I am absolutely mad for continuing like this, but am I just being taken for a mug? Love the podcast, if honestly makes me laugh so much. That's Anon. Spanish Anon again. Um, is she getting taken for a she, ride no, here? I, well, this is the thing with women. They like, we like to think that, well, not women. Uh, well, I don't know what to say. But, you know, they like to think that that kind of non-emotional sex mm, is good. Is good. Is what, they, is what they want. Is what they want. Are they, are they but lying? But it's not. Are they well, lying it, to themselves? Well, I wouldn't like that. I prefer a nice little spoon and love and a puppy. <laughs> you know yeah, but you're in a different kind of like part time of your life, aren't you? I think you know. I'd like to think you're, you're happily married. She's single. She's found a guy ten years younger. It's exciting. It's fresh. She's into it. Um, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I think she's, she's enjoying it. She's becoming emotionally attached, and she wants more. She's, she wants to settle down with him. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Where the, like, the man's probably happy just... It's all on his terms at the minute. He just he calls her when he wants it and it happens. She calls him when she kind of wants to see him and it doesn't happen. I probably think she should quit while she's ahead. Like yeah. if, if that was my friend, that was my friend telling me this story and she, and then she was saying, oh, you know, it was great. He's 10 years younger. The sex is amazing. Da, da, da. But now like... I'm saying let's go for a meal or should we meet up? And he's saying no and it all seems to be on air terms. I would personally tell my friend, back away now because you sound like you're getting emotionally involved, mm. emotionally attached and you're only going to end up hurt. So put it to bed, not literally, mm. and say we've had a great time while it lasted and, you know, move on. Or, to, or just and get to, or someone to talk who to does him and say like, you know, when I call you, 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 you know, it's, you never, we never meet up and all that. When you call me, obviously, I come running. Yeah, but then like, she's crazy. Yeah, but it doesn't matter if she's going to pie him off like you say anyway. No, because he does. Because he he's... might, he might actually go. Oh, I never thought of it like that. Sorry, let's let's actually. I really uh, like he you. Won't. He won't. Well, I agree with you. I don't think he will either. But <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but it's worth a shot. Mm. Is what I'm saying. They might. It might actually. You might actually go. Oh, do you know what? I never really thought. No, of but it like I don't that. think she needs to do that. She knows. All she right. knows. All right. Absolutely. Get rid. Hey guys, I've got a bit of an agony ab and I'm looking for some advice. We've recently decided we want to downscale our wedding. Invites have been sent yet. Sorry. We've recently decided we want to downscale our wedding. Invites haven't been sent yet and it's just going massively over budget. We decided we only want our immediate family and friend, uh, immediate family there, parents, grandparents, aunties, uncles, cousins. Neither of us have a friendship group, sadly, as we are both so consumed with our job. And it just felt it was becoming more of a party for our parents. It hasn't gone down too well with a couple of our parents and has left us feeling a bit meh about the whole thing. <laughs> My fiancé keeps joking about getting married when we go to Florida at the end of the year. 
Am I wrong for seriously? Am I wrong for seriously starting to think about that idea? For an overwhelmed, laid back, but now stressed bride to be. Thanks, Ab. Oh. Oh. Well, honey, because I don't know your name. We've done both. We've done both uh, ends of the spectrum. We've done the big wedding Mm -hmm. where we've invited everyone to it. And we've done the scaled down blessing, the scaled down blessing, vow renewal with our immediate family, Mm. with our kids. I think I think the close knit one is 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 better. It feels more special. Having it? having been kind because of... it, it is a party for everyone. Everyone just gets pissed. Everyone takes advantage of the bar. Mm-hmm. And there's people you've never seen another... before or, or since. Mm. Like it's our like... wedding was amazing, and people still talk about it to this day, and like us included. But I don't think she should be feeling guilty for wanting to just. I don't think so either. I think you get your core people that you love. And say, look, we're just having a small wedding to, to the rest, yeah. and 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 just do it that way. I, I do think it's I do think it's better, and you'll have more kind of budget to go where you wanted to go. Mm. Um, I, I would, you know, having kind of we've been there a little bit, you know, certainly with the big wedding, then Raoul and you, which was a lot smaller. And I, I do think the smaller one is is better. Yeah. So don't feel guilty about it, really. I don't think she should. Mm. I, I I think for all brides to be. It's your wedding. Do what you want. If you want to do the big wedding, do mm. it. If you want to do something simple and you're finding this the whole big thing too stressful, just do, go with your gut and do what you want to do. Mm. Exactly. Good advice. Good advice, babe. Well, great agony up there. Thought you were right on it today. Fist pump. Fantastic. <laughs> I I to, to give me a fist pump. Fist pump. Monkey cage. <laughs> <laughs> give me five. Scuba dive. <laughs> <laughs> One too far. One too far. (laughs) Well, do you know what? You know, it was a great pod today. Good to go trip down memory lane. Mm. You know, kind of the old, old love. Nice to hear some love stories, some nice ones. You know, people together from such a young age. Puppy love. Together now. Um, I thought it was incredible. Another therapy crouch done, babe. Well done. Okay. (laughs) Fuck's sake. (laughs) Ha 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 ha.